I'm in between Moultrie, Georgia and Tipton, Georgia. I got about 15 miles or so to go to get to Tipton. I've been wanting to grab a couple nice scenery shots for you and it seems like every time I sneak up on one, by the time I gra grab my camera, it's too late and I've done missed it. But this is Highway 319 North headed to Tifton and it is a pretty nice drive. Not a lot of traffic and just pretty scenery. See, see some cool old stuff sitting on the side of the road every now and then or some kind of old dilapidated barn off to the side. It's pretty neat. Here's a shot anyway, driving. A lot of it kind of looks like this. All right, well, we made it to Tifton. And it's, like I said, it was, it's a little bit early to get to Keese. He's not at the shop yet. So I'm gonna stop and have me some lunch. I'm at uh, Logan's Roadhouse. And this is right where the interstate is. That's why it's a real busy area right in here. Uh, there's Interstate 75 right there headed north to Atlanta. And I think just the, um, the hotel's either over there or the next exit up. It's all right here together. But I'm gonna go in here and have me some lunch and then we'll go to Keys. So we safely made it down here to Keys shop. Been here for a couple hours now giving them a hand. Me and a few of the other guys are uh, we all kind of showed up right about the same time. I think it was about two o'clock we got here and we've been helping Keith trying to get some last minute things finished up, getting some work tables ready and things like that. So let's uh, let's check out his shop. I'm sure you all know what his channel what his what his shop looks like, but here's a nice shot from the outside of it anyway, kind of looking down towards it. And we'll take a little walk through and see some of his machines and tools. He's got a little fish pond out here on his property too. This is gonna be, this is the machine shop side here. This is all of his lays over here. And then right behind me where I was just at, this is, uh, this is gonna be more of the middle of machines is gonna come over here. That's a big Monarch that he's been getting cleaned up. And this is another Monarch that he's been working on here, getting it cleaned up and painted. And he's got a little bit of repair to be done on it. The uh, clutch rod here is broken. Somebody broke that trying to lift it. That's why it's important to block these things. When you go to put your slings around it, always put blocks here to keep your straps off of everything. Paint's looking good though. There's a LeBlanc that he's been restoring. He's got a lot of videos on this, putting it back together. All of his grinding machines over there on that side. And this is, uh, this is going to be his wood, wood shop back here. He's got his wood equipment set up there for cutting because all of his wood trim and everything that he's done inside here. Everything looks really nice here. Got facilities. <laughs> So that's it. There's Key's shop. So I thought I'd go ahead and try to get one quick little segment in. We just started practicing our hand scraping 
and I, I've just made a, a, a first couple little passes on this cast iron block here. These are some blocks that Richard brings to the class for everybody to practice on and learn how to start scraping in something flat and teaching a couple different techniques. So I'm going to give you a peek at that and I'm just going to give you a peek around the, uh, the uh, shop here showing everybody's, what, what everybody's doing. So I don't think it's, it's uh, <laughs> good, it's just practicing, but that's, uh, I've gone over it twice, once, once this direction, and then I come over here basically going that way because I know we're, we're, um, we're swapping directions. Looking good. Oh, I hope so, but I don't, I don't think it is. Just keep crisscrossing until you get it right, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, here's Lance. He's working on he's working on his block too, looking real good. And that's something that Richard just showed us with the with the markers there that we're gonna start practicing. So Hey YouTube. <laughs> Lance Balti. Is that what I'm supposed to say? <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, just a quick shot of the uh, shop there. Everybody's kind of working on their uh, their own little parallel, their little flat block. And we're gonna keep going at it the rest of the day. So, more to come. All right, so we've been scraping on it for a little while, going back and forth, trying to just get my technique down, uh, holding the scraper. I added a little, a little pusher, just to, that looks like a, for a 3M pad, just to go up against my belly whenever I'm scraping. I'm just practicing the technique. But I want to go over to the granite plate now and go ahead and blue it for the first time. So I'm kind of excited about that and see where all my high spots are. All right, we're gonna check it for the first time with the blue. Is that about enough? Checking it again. I'm starting to get a little bit better contact, a little bit. The hinge is coming in on this end. On this end, it's still hinging down here on the end. We want it to be about a third of the way in whenever it hinges. And you can see it's, it's down here a little bit. Anywhere, 
Need more blue? All right, we're grinding in this, this carbide to a, using the gauge here, a 60 radius. I'm doing both ends there. And then we'll do these other two edges with a different radius. I believe he said a 40 and a 20, but we're just gonna do the two 60s right now. Using a roughing wheel here to get it roughed in. And we've got two more uh, glendos over here with some finer wheels. So that's what we're working on right there. So this one puts a five degree negative rake on the edges. You have two cutting edges. And you just have to look at it till you get it consistent. I just keep working it in until it's about half and half there and you have a nice sharp edge. This is how far I've come so far. We're finally starting to get a little bit more uh, points, more evenly distributed through the whole plate. So I'm switching to a different tool. I just This is the ones that I just ground right here with a number 60 radius. So I'm gonna swap this out on the holder I got to put it back in this guy right here and stick it, we'll tighten that down and then put it in here and we'll start working those blue marks there. So it's getting closer and closer. I'm doing some bump scraping techniques on it now after I blew it and we're getting if you can notice all the blue I've got most of that kind of bumped out of there but there's still a lot of blue in there that's all of your points of contact so I'm getting ready to uh, dress it with the stone and gonna, gonna blew it up again and polish it and see where all of the points of contact are we're trying to get uh, close to 20 points per square inch of contact. So you clean the blue off We using some Windex and just use a um, India stone and you just want to lightly rub it. Keep it flat. And now all that's doing is just taking the burrs off of the scrape marks. Uh, yeah, I can see it on you. Yeah. Okay. We'll try that one. This helps keep the glare off of it. It just helps to see what you're doing as you're bluing it and as you're uh, polishing it out. All right, we just blued her up. It looks like it's finally coming in. Nice points of contact. We'll put a card, <laughs> to, uh, we'll put a card to Adam's video here. I appreciate that. Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing it. It's finally, it's, it's looking, oh, yeah. Look at that, that one, this looks more, uh, more points of contact yeah, than before. Yeah, really good. You know, I put that square, one inch square over and you realize that's actually getting to like 20 points. I think so. I'm about to, I'm about to check it. I'm going to go over there and polish it, get the high spots on it and, and see. So I'll go set it back on the, on the granite table upside down and rub it in it. In it. It basically polishes the the high spots and it's really neat when you look at it through a reflection it might be hard to get it on video 
but we'll try it again. Alright, so here, here's basically your square and one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not sure exactly how you're counting. Well each each one is a is a a spot. Okay? That's one. Actually that little bitty one there is one. That's one. That's one. That's one. But this big one here, mm -hmm. that's only one. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I think we just did. Okay. Now some of them are small. Yeah. And some of them are big, but yeah. now what percentage would you kind of think that might be? 40 percent? 30, 40 percent maybe? I'm thinking somewhere yeah. in that range, yeah. 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 And that's about where we want it to be, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, shoot for about 40 yeah. percent or 50 percent? 40 to 60. 40 to 60 percent contact. And that's so that whenever we flake it, You'll still you're have. Gonna lose, you're going to lose contact. Right. You'll lose about half of your contact yeah. space. So all of the blue points or the little dots there will be your bearing surfaces there. That right. that, that, that's if, the high spot. that the high spots. If there's something sliding across here, that's carrying the weight. And all the low spots is oh. where your is where your oil and lubrication will right. be. Awesome. You got her, you done got her rub yep. down. Okay, so we're gonna lift it and lift it. stick it over here. We'll Alright. Yeah, see when you pull it up on your tape, look how much better it looks. Yeah. I see what you mean now about the the color there, the, the red. Yeah. Yeah, that's so much color right. Now you can roll those edges that tape over into the page and rub it. There's our little CSI investigation type imprint. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right, I'm practicing half moon flaking for the first time. I've already done a few. I'll get a tighter shot here in a minute. that that looks really good well thank you that's my first practice strokes right there Mine look like crap. <laughs> some of them look some of them look better than the, the the question mark ones are I know not preferred but uh, that very first row I did really good there I think so this part here big dug in way too much for me oh yeah and by hand you mean 
Well, I was trying to use, you know, a more flexible thing. I think maybe the stiffness makes a big difference. Maybe this is the trick? Yeah. Is this one here? That one's really stiff. Yeah. I'm going to keep practicing here and see if I can keep getting a little better at it. So we've been doing a little bit of practicing with half moon flaking, try uh, using a different a different scraper. I'm using the one that, yeah, go ahead. I'm using the one that uh, I was scraping in with with a different blade on it. It's reacting a little bit different. Takes a lot of practice. Oh, that's cool. Now, which blade? Now, you're just using your regular blade? This is one that Lance let me borrow. Oh. And Put it. I don't remember what radius that is on there. Lance, you know what radius? 60 radius? Okay. <laughs> okay. You flaking? Yeah, I'm still, still working on it. You got a blade? Yeah, I got a different one. And it's it's reacting different. Totally different, huh? Yeah. yeah. So that's why I'm practicing. I'm trying to get it before I move on, man. We're winding down our second day. It's almost four o'clock. And I haven't quite moved on to the power scraping yet, but I think everybody else in the class has been doing power scraping. But I was really trying to get my practice in hand scraping and then hand flaking. And I finally got the hand flaking in and I'm getting ready to move on to power scraping. So this is just going to kind of documenting my little journey here. That's what I've been getting in. That's what I had uh, scraped in earlier. And then I've done the uh, half moon flaking in two different directions. So we're getting ready to use the uh, Biax power scraper. This is the one I've been using. And this is moving on to the uh, the power method. This is all going to disappear here real soon. They just took the the uh, mag chuck off the land of surface grinder. I believe they're going to get the table off. I think they're going to get the table off, and they're going to start doing some scraping here. Lance, are, are, is the table coming all the way off? Yeah, the table's coming off. Okay, I guess they're going to do some inspection on the bottom there. The the actual ways. Oh, okay. Dang, it looks pretty too already. Yeah, I thought it looked pretty. Okay. All right, here they come with the uh, 
You got um, you got these will these are two sticks. All right, so they're working on that. I'm gonna start doing my power scraping here. I'll get a little peek around the shop. So we're winding down day two. I just wanted to get a quick little shot around of some different scraping projects that the other guys have been working on. Let's take a little walk around. That's Lance's uh, saddle off his uh, 10 E that he's gonna be working on. I just started power scraping. Just started doing some power scraping. Gotta get a little bit of that once I get it in a little bit flatter. Mike's doing power scraping. What's up, everybody? <laughs> He's doing good. He's got a lot of good contact there. We've got a straight edge over here. I believe this is Neil. And that thing looks awesome. That's looking really good. Here's Tom's. He's doing a good job. Looks awesome. I believe this is Keith's plate here. John's working on his parallel. I think Cameron's working on it. Is this your straight edge here? Nice. It's a Kingway straight edge building. Oh, very cool. Looking pretty. You got a nice pattern there. Appreciate it. And I believe Patrick, Patrick, right? Yeah. Yeah. Patrick. He's doing uh, power scraping as well. Power scraping, trying to get yep. it flat. You're right. You're right where I'm at. <laughs> you're right where I'm at. Good thing some of some of the guys are a little more advanced. <laughs> yeah, I noticed yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was just taking my time, making sure I get each thing right before I move on. We got a little angle plate here. I think this is uh, uh, Jake, James Kilroy's. Okay. Yeah, okay. I've got mine. This is going to be my little project once I feel comfortable that I'm ready to actually start on it. I got a long ways to go. Yeah, that's my, that's going to be my little. So you're going to do the faces and the edges? No, I'm just going to do the faces there. Oh, okay. Why should I do the edges too? Bitch to do. <laughs> well, I was just planning on doing the machine surfaces yeah. there, and try to make sure that it's a, a perfectly Square. ninety degrees. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah this was uh, we Dad's. Have, we have the technology to check. Okay, I know. We got those devices over there and some. Uh, Magnetic some, squares. Oh yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it checked. So that's it for the day. I think we're winding down and gonna head back to the room and get some dinner later. Signing off for the day. Okay. <laughs>